At a distance of 150 million kilometers from Earth, the Sun is all the star we need. Its energy churns our atmosphere, keeps our oceans liquid, and makes life possible. But imagine if the sun were more than three times larger in our sky and blasting every exposed surface with up to 10 times as much energy. Then Earth would be a very different world, a world ruled by heat and light. A world like Mercury. With its baked and battered surface, Mercury seems like a no man's land among the planets. But it's a no man's land that scientists need to explore. As the nearest planet to the sun, Mercury lives in a cosmic hot zone that holds important clues to the origins of our solar system. And it may be our key to understanding conditions on countless alien worlds scattered throughout the galaxy. For centuries, Mercury eluded astronomers' best efforts to learn its secrets. The reason comes down to geometry. As seen from Earth, the angle between Mercury and the Sun is never more than about 30 degrees. The only way to separate the planet from the Sun's overpowering glare is to look very low toward the horizon immediately after sunset or just before sunrise. Under such conditions, even the largest optical telescopes in the world were not able to show any detail on Mercury's surface, right up until the dawn of the space age. All of that changed with Mariner 10. Launched in 1973, this intrepid spacecraft was designed to fly by Venus but scientists realized they could get two planets for the price of one by including Mercury as a second target. During 1974 and 1975, Mariner 10 made three separate passes of Mercury, coming to within 327 kilometers of the planet's surface during its third and final approach. During those historic encounters, centuries of speculation were replaced with a stark new picture of the solar system's innermost world. Mariner 10 revealed a heavily cratered planet that looked a lot like Earth's moon. Most of the craters date back billions of years. Because Mercury is too small and too hot to hold on to a thick atmosphere, its surface does not experience erosion from water or wind. Yet hidden in this ancient surface are tantalizing signs that Mercury has changed over the eons, and that despite its outward appearance, Mercury is very different from our moon on the inside. One clue is the planet's surprisingly large mass. Mariner 10 found that Mercury is nearly five times more massive than the Moon, even though its diameter is only 40% greater. To be so heavy, Mercury must conceal a huge metallic core, covered by a relatively thin skin of lighter rock. This idea was further reinforced by Mariner 10's discovery that Mercury has a magnetic field. Although it is much weaker than Earth's, the presence of the field suggests that at least part of Mercury's core is still in a molten state. Mariner 10 tried to glean further clues from its reconnaissance of Mercury, but during its three brief passes, the spacecraft imaged less than half of the planet's surface, and what it found left many unanswered questions. 
clearly another mission to Mercury was needed, one designed for a much longer stay. But even though Mercury beckoned, the dream of returning would remain unfulfilled for nearly 30 years. At last, on August 3rd, 2004, NASA's Messenger spacecraft set out to become the first planetary probe to orbit Mercury and reveal its features and characteristics in detail. But just getting there would be half the challenge. Mercury is much closer to Earth than most of the other planets in our solar system. But it also sits deep within the sun's gravitational field, which causes it to travel through space at a drastically different speed, roughly 65,000 kilometers per hour faster than Earth. In order to put itself in orbit around Mercury, rather than just sail by, Messenger would first have to match its speed to the planets. Paradoxically, that meant the spacecraft would have to lose energy to allow it to gradually spiral in closer to the sun. The journey would take over six and a half years. Along the way, Messenger passed near to Mercury on three separate occasions, giving scientists a chance to test the probe's cameras and sensors. The results were spectacular but the fleeting glimpses only whet scientists' appetite for more data. Finally, in March 2011, Messenger approached Mercury for a fourth and final time, this time moving at just the right speed to be captured by the planet's gravitational pull. The long-awaited exploration of the solar system's innermost planet was set to begin. Thanks to Messenger, Mercury was finally getting its moment in the sun. Elusive and fast moving in the twilight sky, the planet Mercury was named by ancient astronomers after the messenger of the gods. But not until 2011 would NASA's own messenger mission be in a position to reveal one of the least explored worlds in the solar system. Messenger came well equipped for the job. The sunlight at Mercury is so intense it would easily fry an unprotected spacecraft. So Messenger is covered in thermal insulation and it carries a built-in system of radiators that are designed to draw heat away from its sensitive electronics. Two-thirds of the surface area of its solar panels are mirrored to deflect rather than absorb solar energy and help control temperature. Finally, the main body of the spacecraft remains hidden from direct sunlight by a large sunshade made of ceramic cloth on a lightweight titanium frame. While the outer surface of the sunshade can reach 370 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, behind this essential barrier the spacecraft operates at room temperature. Scientists expected the measures would be enough for Messenger to survive at least a year in the hostile environment around Mercury. But as Messenger began revealing the planet's complex geology, they were soon hoping for more. With both a wide and a narrow angle camera, Messenger would be able to map the entire surface of Mercury down to features one kilometer across and zoom in on areas of special interest to see details as small as 20 meters across. The camera system could also be used to reveal slight color differences in Mercury's rocky terrain that would otherwise be too subtle for human eyes to discern. This would prove useful for reconstructing the multi-layered history exposed by Mercury's craters. And there were many craters to look at. On the moon, there's a long-standing tradition that craters are named after scientists and philosophers. On Mercury, it was decided instead that craters should be named after famous artists, composers, and authors. 
But while Mercury's craters may all have the arts in common, Messenger soon discovered some striking differences among them. Here, Messenger zooms in on two craters, Degas and Bronte, located side by side. To the human eye, they seem identical in color. But Messenger reveals that Degas looks bluish relative to the brownish color of Bronte. This difference suggests that Mercury's surface includes layers of rock with different compositions. In this case, the impact has punched through a bluer colored rock underlying the brown. Elsewhere, the color differences are more complex, pointing to a rich and diverse geologic history that was not apparent to scientists before Messenger arrived. Sometimes, the effect of an asteroid or comet strike is obvious because it scatters material in bright rays across an older set of features. But not every part of Mercury's surface is shaped by an impact from above. In this intriguing image, a smudge of orange stands out against a darker colored landscape. Seen up close in black and white, the object at the center of the smudge looks like a tall peak inside a crater. But this is no ordinary crater. It's the likely scene of a volcanic eruption that sprayed out orange-colored material from deep within the planet's interior. Messenger has confirmed that Mercury is covered with features like this one that could only have resulted from volcanic activity. Here, a crater named Faulkner looks half sunken into the landscape. The crater was probably flooded by lava, which topped its ancient rim and half filled it with molten rock. Elsewhere, the large crater Rachmaninoff features a double rim, with the outer ring measuring more than 30 kilometers across. Color differences show that lava flooded the center of the crater long after it formed and then spilled over into the region between the inner and outer ring. In other cases, the colors on Mercury's surface are harder to interpret. For example, some crater floors have bright hollows, which stand out against the darker rock and are completely unlike anything seen on the moon. The exact nature of these bright patches remains a mystery, but scientists suspect they may be the result of some minerals becoming gaseous under the sun's intense glare. One area where Mercury's color is especially revealing is the Caloris Basin. At 1,500 kilometers across, it is by far the largest impact feature on the planet. Caloris formed in the first billion years of the solar system's history, when a very large asteroid struck Mercury. Over time, other smaller craters scarred the basin. Then, lava covered the basin's vast central plain, leaving the raised rims of the smaller craters to stand out like blue islands. In contrast, the edge of the giant basin is marked with orange spots, where hot lava found a path to the surface through the shattered bedrock. Meanwhile, at the center of the Caloris Basin, Messenger has discovered a strange network of troughs that spread spider-like across the basin floor. These are indications that the surface of the basin may have been pulled or stretched in the past. With its oversized metallic core, there seems little doubt now that Mercury was once a geologically active planet and that it remained so long after its formation. Now, aided by Messenger's trove of images and data, scientists are gaining a deeper understanding of the hidden forces that lie below Mercury's pockmarked surface. Hundreds of light years from Earth, a newly discovered world basks in the fierce light of an alien sun. This is one of scores of planets uncovered by NASA's Kepler mission, which was designed to hunt for worlds like Earth. 
small, rocky, and at just the right distance from their stars to allow for the presence of liquid water. But in the course of its search, Kepler has also found many planets that are more like Mercury, orbiting much closer to their stars. Long neglected by planetary explorers, Mercury has now become our best reference point for understanding countless other hot worlds that populate our galaxy in the billions. And of special interest to scientists are those features on Mercury that are found nowhere else in the solar system. Features like towering cliffs that snake across Mercury's battered terrain for hundreds of kilometers. Here, one such cliff slices the ancient crater Rameau in half, leaving one side of the crater two full kilometers higher than the other. Having imaged the entire surface of Mercury, NASA's MESSENGER spacecraft has confirmed that cliffs like these are widespread around the planet. It's now believed that they formed when Mercury's giant metallic core cooled and gradually shrank. This left the planet with an outer skin that was too large. As the interior grew smaller, the surface buckled, forming cliffs like giant wrinkles in a planet-wide shrink wrap. The cliffs are an example of how Mercury's outer appearance has been shaped by internal forces. And as scientists combine messenger data with ground-based radar measurements, the true nature of Mercury's dynamic interior is now coming into focus. A key discovery is that Mercury's metallic core is even larger than expected, accounting for 85% of the planet's total diameter. But while the inner portion of the core is likely made of solid iron, like Earth's, at least some portion of the outer core must be liquid. It is the motions within this electrically charged liquid that are responsible for generating Mercury's magnetic field. However, this picture presents scientists with a dilemma. If Mercury's core is made only of iron, it should have completely solidified by now. Since the smaller the planet, the more quickly internal heat escapes, even for a planet as hot as Mercury. This has led researchers to speculate that lighter elements, like silicon and sulfur, are present in Mercury's core in significant amounts. That would lower the core's melting point and leave the outer portion liquid. Mercury's liquid core may even be surrounded by a shell of solid iron sulfide, something not seen on any other planet. But while this explanation satisfies all the data, it leads to a larger mystery. In order to explain why Mercury's core is so large, scientists have speculated that Mercury was once more like Earth or Venus, a larger planet with a thick rocky mantle surrounding its core. Then, an enormous collision with another object blasted off much of that mantle, leaving the core intact. Another theory suggests that in the very early days of the solar system, the sun went through a much hotter phase and boiled off some of Mercury's mantle with its intense heat. But the latest findings challenge both of these theories. Instead, it may be that Mercury formed as it is now, small but rich in lighter elements that were once thought not to have been abundant so close to the sun. Whatever the explanation, it's clear there's something about Mercury's history and about the formation of the solar system as a whole that we don't yet understand. And that's not the only way that Mercury is defying expectations, because here, on a world so thoroughly baked by the sun, Messenger has also discovered ice. As hard as this is to imagine, scientists already had hints that there was ice on Mercury because radar observations indicated there is a highly reflective material somewhere near the planet's north and south poles. Mercury's poles are where we find deep craters 
whose bottoms remain in perpetual darkness as Mercury rotates on its axis. Shielded from direct sunlight, these craters are like cold traps for water vapor brought to Mercury by incoming comets that collide with the planet's surface. Although Messenger's cameras cannot see into these dark-bottomed craters, Messenger detected the presence of ice with a device called a neutron spectrometer, which measures how much the ice absorbs the energy of incoming cosmic rays. The data suggest there could be up to one trillion tons of ice on Mercury, to a depth of several meters. If so, the ice makes a tantalizing target for future explorations of the planet's surface. Again and again, Mercury has proved to be an astonishing place. Not just a hotter version of our moon, but a fascinating world in its own right, with a history that is crucial to our understanding of rocky planets everywhere. That is why the European and Japanese space agencies have now joined forces to send another mission to Mercury, which is scheduled to arrive early in the next decade. Once, Mercury was the least understood of planets. Today, it has become one of the most interesting and the ambassador of a vast and emerging population of newfound worlds that together make up the cosmic hot zone. <laughs>